Hello everyone, welcome back to MixBuzz TV Mixing and Mastering Tutorials on YouTube. Today we're gonna start a series of short videos in which I will try to, how can I say it, um, clean up the bullshit. Meaning I see so many bad mixing advice given on forums, on video tutorials, just bad information in general that is spread around, who knows how, audio mixing myth and legends that I feel like they are bad information and they just do harm to especially people that just start mixing and, and is trying to learn. So the first one is what I call the high pass madness. This is probably the most misunderstood advice let's say it this way that i see around i'm sure if you read forums and and watch tutorials in general you've seen so many times uh, people telling you to high pass so to cut the lows on all your tracks but kick and bass or just kick or just bass so technically to get rid of all that you have uh, below let's say 60 hertz or 80 hertz or i've read stuff like 500 hertz and below and this is just crazy i get from where this myth and advice comes though most likely it comes from the fact that nowadays most people mix in not treated rooms so the biggest challenge when you're not mixing in a proper treated studio and with a proper monitoring system is to hear what is happening in the low end. So I get it. You're you're doing your mix and it sounds great in your room and then you go in your car and and the bass and the kick drum are just louder than everything else and boomy and and is just a mess in the low end. I'm sure this happened many times to many of you. And this is because like I said in a in a non-professional studio when you cannot listen the the low end what is happening in the lower octave you you cannot mix it. If you cannot hear it you cannot mix it. So I get it. It's better to cut uh, everything down there and have the mix sound maybe a little thin, but it's better than having it sound boomy. So this is where I think the myth of high passing everything under a certain uh, frequency come from. But this is bad for two reasons. The first one, cutting the low end below a certain frequency, especially if it's very high, like, I don't know, 400 or 250, is the best way to cut your mixes balls. Okay, it's the best way to just make your mix instantaneously weak. And I feel like is one of the reasons because most mixes sound uh, harsh. Because low end affect how we perceive the high end and the mid range. So if we cut everything down there, we, we get rid of a lot of energy. And, and remember, bass frequency are perceived with your body. They reson they vibrate, they resonate with your body. So once you play your your mix on on a different system that has some sub and it is a full range system, you miss the air moving if you high pass all your tracks, but kick and bass. If you record a real instruments, try to track your instruments with the correct amount of low end so you don't have to uh, high pass so much. Because uh, don't, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying don't high pass anything, okay? I'm just saying don't do anything by default. Do not high pass things by default because that's just crazy okay high pass the things that need to be high passed okay that they, they sound they actually don't have any energy down there like i don't know hi-hats for example but i've seen uh, this advice given for electric guitars oh high pass everything you know below 250 or you don't need 80 hertz no you need 80 hertz trust me you don't need all of it you know, you may want to attenuate that range, but you need it. Don't cut it out. Okay. So this is the first reason. Uh, it is important. The, the right amount of low end energy on every element is important. Just don't cut it by default. And the next reason is this. Every time you make a move with your EQ, 
you change the phase of the track. And while this is not a problem uh, when, you, when you listen to the track alone, what you change is the correlation of the phase between the elements. So let's take, for example, this vocal. This is a vocal track, okay? But even when you do record your tracks, okay? From but another tutorial. And um, here I have a low cut, a 12 dB, 50 Hertz. Let's say, you know, it could be a standard low cut for a vocal. Some, some people cut higher, but this is not important. Look at the wave here and look at what happens when I cut the lows. You see, this is a phase shift. That's revert. Okay. Let's render again. This is what a low cut filter does to your track. Okay. It changes the phase correlation. Okay. So is this a problem? Yes and no. Every EQ move will bring a phase shift. This becomes a problem only when you have multi-miked sources, like for example, kick in and kick out. Don't EQ the two elements independently. Bus the two kick drums mics to one bus and treat it as one, and then I pass that one if you need to, okay? Don't don't I pass or EQ singularly each mic? For example, electric guitars. This is something I see all the time. Uh, two mics on a cabinet and people high pass each microphone independently. That's wrong. That's just going to mess up the phase coherence between the two mics. The two mics that you spent probably a lot of time uh, putting in phase. If you go and, and, and low pass each microphone independently, you're gonna, you're gonna screw the phase up of the two mics. You might not uh, hear such a big difference, but I can assure you when you start mixing and you start to have problems because your uh, guitars or your drums start to sound hollow and you don't feel the kick drum or your, the bass and the kick do not uh, glue together, most likely that is why. So what if you actually need to high pass or EQ in general, uh, let's say kick in or kick out independently or two microphones on the same uh, bass cabinet or guitar cabinet? What you should do, you should use a linear phase EQ. And you see, if I render this, the phase shift because I'm in zero latency mode. If I switch to linear phase and I render, See, the phase doesn't change. Now, we all know that linear phase EQ bring what is called pre-ringing. I'm not going to describe the pre-ringing problem with linear phase EQ in this video. Maybe we'll have another one if you guys are interested in it. But this will suffice for now. Uh, just know that linear phase will not shift the phase of your track when you EQ it whether it is high pass, low pass, or just, you know, cut or boost uh, with a bell. So that is probably the best moment in which to use a linear phase EQ when you have to EQ one element that is multi-miked. For example, snare top and bottom. Same thing. What I usually see is cut the lows, high pass the bottom microphone, okay? If you do that, you mess up the phase correlation between the top and the bottom mic. What you should do instead, you should bus top and bottom mic to a bus and then high pass that one if you need to, okay? Or if you need to high pass the bottom mic, use a linear phase EQ. And once again, pay attention to the pre-ringing thing, but that is something we're gonna address in another video. So again, I'm not saying do not use high pass filter is an absolutely useful tool and you should be used as well as the low pass filter, especially for digital. That's uh, material for another video, but don't do it by default. Okay. Don't high pass every track, but bass and kick by default, because that's just crazy. Okay. And another important thing is when you use a low cut or a high pass filter, 
you need to keep in mind that whether or not the graphic is showing, there's gonna be a little bump around the cut frequency. So another thing that I feel like you should avoid is to low cut, to high pass all the tracks at the same frequency, okay? Don't just, uh, let's say by default, you high pass things at 80 hertz. Don't do it on all the tracks because there's gonna be a buildup in that uh, cut frequency, whether it's 50, uh, 80, whatever, 100. Don't, don't use the same high pass filter on every trucks because this little bump, if you multiply for the number of trucks that you have, maybe 50, maybe 100, maybe 140 trucks, it's gonna be a lot. Okay, and the phase shift is gonna be a lot. So, once again, uh, don't do anything by default, ever. And don't put any compressor by default, don't put any EQ by default, don't put any distortion or saturation by default, but especially don't do a uh, high pass filter by default. And let me show you another thing. If I low pass once, that's the phase shift that we have, okay? revert, phase shift. If I happen to high pass again, there's gonna be more phase shift and more phase shift and more, you see? So every time you do high pass something, if you high pass it on multiple stages, let's say you high pass uh, single channels on your uh, guitar cabinet, then you high pass the guitar bus, then you high pass the music bus and all this phase shift here, they are going to add up and they are probably going to mess up your low end a lot. Once again, I'm not saying do not use high pass filters, but you need to know what are the consequences and what the phase shift sound like, which sometimes is even, you know, pleasant to hear. You can actually use phase shift to make things sound better, but you need to know what is going on. Okay, otherwise you blindly high pass everything and then you ask why your mix doesn't sound as powerful as you expect it to. Okay, so this is it for today. I hope this video was informative. If you have any question, please uh, write it in the comment or send us a message and we will get back at you. As usual, if you like the video, please don't forget to click the like button, subscribe to the channel and see you next time.